Welcome to this week's episode here on Overworked Admin. Uh, we are on lesson 11 out of 14 on our PowerShell series. This week, uh, we are going to start working on the framework that will be the project that we're gonna develop over um, the rest of our lessons. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a PowerShell script that you could run as a Windows scheduled task and it'll watch different um, services for you on your server or your workstation um, and read them out of a CSV file and let you know, it'll email you based on, on an SMTP server when your services go down. And I got the idea for this script uh, from a customer who had a really low budget and he didn't have a very large infrastructure and they didn't have the knowledge of Nagios or any open source monitoring software. So I figured why not a simple PowerShell script? So we're gonna get started. There's a couple things that we're going to be looking at um, in this series. We're gonna start off with uh, uh, variables. And um, a lot of the times when you create your variables, services, um, you'll want to instantiate those variables properly so that if there's any memory remaining in them from the last time the script was ran, this really isn't so much of a problem with script, but it can be more of a traditional programming language. You should clear out and flush your variables. It's good practice. So we're gonna need a couple of variables. We're gonna need services, which will be a collection of objects that we're gonna be using. Uh, we are actually going to be um, reading our CSV file uh, from a location on our hard drive. And so we're gonna have a script dir where the directory uh, that our script is. And then we're gonna have the services that we want, service to check. And so we're gonna make sure that these are all null values every time that, uh, that we run the script. And so now we're gonna start populating our script here. We're going to take scripter and we want to set that either to, and I just have this on my desktop. So I'm going to uh, just point this to my desktop here. And that's going to assign this variable there. So C user Stephen desktop. And then for the services, I'm going to um, actually call this, I'm going to create this object. And what we're going to do is we're going to use a new function. And to import a CSV and work with it as a collection of objects, you just call import dash CSV. And you can see it's in our IntelliSense there. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna combine our scriptster, right? And this is, again, just the variable that is going to the path. So we're gonna take this. And then we're going to tack on the name of the file. And my name of the file is just called service.csv. And this is the format, and I'll show you where it is. It's just hanging out on my desktop here, right? So it's just service.csv. Now, there's a couple things that you need to know about um, working with CSV files. If you remember when we did get uh, service, uh, there is these table headings here. So we'll scroll all the way back up. Status, name, display name. When you're working with a CSV, you need to give, um, because they're objects, you need to give the PowerShell um, scripts some context of what you're working with. So if you see here, I have is my heading service name and desired status. And if you can see here, like my desired status is kind of, you know, status like stop or start. And then my service name is the name here. Maybe I could have done a little bit better job and just named these the exact same thing, but it's just a little bit descriptive, uh, more descriptive for me. So this is the services. Now we're actually not gonna use this next variable, but I'm just gonna populate it. Um, admin email and this would be different for you, obviously. Admin at, we'll just call it overworkedadmin.com. So that will be our admin email address. And I like to clear the screen, as you all know, so we don't have any weird stuff coming out on the screen. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our for each loop and we need to extract 
all of, well, in our case, the two services, so we have the print spooler, I'm sorry, three services, this print spooler, this is the bits, um, the background, uh, I'm sorry, this is the bit locker service, and I forget what this service is. But we're gonna take each, the a for each loop, and we're gonna say for each service, singular, in services, what we're gonna do is we're gonna iterate through each one, and for just for the sake of time, I'm not gonna type this all out, I'm just gonna copy and paste it here so I don't have to type so much. But what we're gonna do is you see this service object, and we covered this in the for each loop section, so if this is a little hazy, go back. But what we can do now is we can use this dot notation like we can normally use, and we can use service name and desired status. So we're gonna do service name, and then we can do this whole thing again. And now we can do desired status. And by, you know, just like I was saying, giving it these column names because these are all objects, it allows you to query, you know, them just like you would, you know, normally do. So let's run this and see what it gives us. So that's exactly what we have. We just ran it. The first one was spooler and it's running. The second one is this and it's running. And the third one is exactly what this is and it's running. Um, and so I can, I guess I can prove that to you. I'll go into my services and uh, I will show you um, that it is in fact running. Uh, so where is this bit locker? So this is not running. So that should be stopped. You have that. And our print spooler, uh, it's down here under P, I believe. And print spooler is in fact running. And you see the print spooler is running there. So pretty straightforward, not you know real life altering stuff there. And I just want to put a uh, write host just because I like the space in mine. I just like to keep my stuff formatted. So now it's just, you have the status and the service name. So now what we want to do is we're iterating through this CSV file. And so let me just remove this service because I can't remember what it is. And now let's see, so we had three and now we have two. So we can see that this is now reading from our CSV file, follows the format. So what we're gonna do is we're going to do the service to check because we want to specifically monitor each service, right? So we're going to do, we're gonna assign our service to check is equal to get service, right? And we're gonna use this good old fashioned pipe where, and this was some of the things that we spoke about right in the beginning, and we've got the dollar sign, the underscore, and the name. So we're gonna look for a specific name. And we're gonna say that's equal to the service dot service name. And that's kind of the nice part about PowerShell. It's got this IntelliSense for us, and so it will um, will just fill it in for us. It's kind of cool. So right now, what do we got? Um, so let's do a write host and see what we have for service to check. Let's see what we get. Okay, so that's the current one that we're doing there. So spooler, all right, so we're good there. We know we're getting the right, right thing. We'll comment that out. So the next part that we're gonna do is we're gonna do it an if statement. And we're gonna say if our service to check Uh, dot status okay is equal to service dot desired status then we're gonna write host uh, the same So let's see, so we know the print spooler is running and this other one, the BD, the bit locker uh, service is not. So see the same service matched. And let me just put, I like to have my, I'm just gonna actually gonna take this down here and put it after my if loop. That way the spacing's a little bit better. So the service is matched and the bit locker service is supposed to be stopped. So that matched. Okay, so now what do we do? We wanna to check to see that 
Um, if it's not matching, we need to give it some you know other property. So let's change the spooler service from running and let's go into services and stop that. Um, because if we, we're not kind of catching that stop condition. So let's see what it says now. See now the BitLocker service is matching, but the principal or service is not matching. We don't have any else statement. We're not doing anything here in the else statement to catch that. So let's do write host. Uh, not uh, matched, uh, different, right? So now we can see if we run this, if we are matching the concept and what we want from our CSV file, it'll work. And so I'll start the print spooler again. So that, right? And if I turn on the BitLocker service, let me scroll up here. Should be this one, let me start that. So that's started. And this should say different. So this is kind of the beginning of our scripts here. And, and the really nice thing about working with CSV is if you have six, a dozen, however many services that you wanna watch, you can just put them in the CSV file and it'll watch it for you. You can run it every five, 10 minutes. And if you only have a couple of servers, maybe two, three, five, or six, it may be a lot easier for you to do this than setting up something like Nagios or a full-blown monitoring system. And you know, it's good to work through these types of practical, uh, practical exercises. So thank you for watching this week. I hope uh, you're kind of excited about the, the project that we're gonna be working on. Hopefully it'll be something useful for you. If you appreciate the content, make sure that you watch the ads or click on the links, whatever. This is how we, uh, this is how we continue to pay for the hosting and things like that. Uh, go over to the website because we have the homeworks and um, you know there's some other content there that you can't get on the YouTube channel. Again, thank you for watching this week and have a great day.